first sermon, so what are we going to do? Um, uh, I'm just going to do my best. Uh, now, don't get, don't already check out on me. Just hang in with me, okay? Hang in there with me for just a minute. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of John, chapter 8. I'll tell you here in a minute where we're going. I just love this house being full. Crystal, I'm so glad you're here. I just asked about you this morning. And it's good to see you this morning. I didn't mean to embarrass you, but I saw your face behind Brother Posey there. And your face is a lot better looking than his. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's good to have you here. Good to see you this morning. Amen. Angela, I'm not sure feeling better. Sort of. I'm glad to have Angela in the house. And I just, uh, I just love this family. Uh, it's really, I love the picture. I love the picture of uh, Isabella and, and Rodney Sleep uh, that you posted. That was great. That was great. Amen. Amen. Uh, this morning. John chapter 8, I'll tell you verse 36 is where we're headed first. How many, how many of you in this place are free? Amen. Turn to your neighbors out free. Free. Wrong neighbor. Turn to the other neighbors out free. I'm free. What does it mean to be free? I'm not bound by anything. I'm not bound by alcohol and drugs. I'm not bound by sex and sin. If you're not bound by those things, you ought to hit the aisle every time you get to church and run the aisle. I'm not bound by depression. I'm not bound by religion. <laughs> I'm not intended in. I'm not bound by the bank. I'm not bound by any other things. I, I'm free. I'm set free. I'm gloriously set free. I have, a, I have things in my life that I'm working on still, but I'm not bound by them. Can somebody say amen? I, I am not. Listen, he, the Bible says that if we are free in Christ, we are free indeed. We'll get there in a minute. But I'm just telling you for a minute, if you are bound this morning, today is your day to get, get delivered and get set free. If you are bound this morning, you are here in the right place at the right time to have your life changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, if you will. In a moment, you can be changed and your life can be different. Well, I like my life just like it is. I understand that, but you want a better life? I do. I've got a good one that's still looking for better. <laughs> I've got a good life. I've got a good wife. If you got a good wife, say amen. amen. Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> got four men with good wives. Amen. If you got a good wife, say amen. amen. If you got a good husband, say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know why? Because God saw fit to put you together. God saw fit to hang, let you guys have a life together. We're coming up on Valentine's Day. It's time to start thinking about some of that stuff. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. <laughs> it's time to start getting getting an understanding of this. I know you're supposed to every all year long, all year long, thank, be thankful for your bride. But I'm telling you right now, or your spouse. But I think right now you need to understand that God has placed you together for a reason. And your reason is for this. Listen, what's the Bible saying? Be don't don't uh, fight with one another that your prayers are not hindered. Right. Be in unity in that. Uh, that's that's a Valentine's stuff. Okay, eight eight and thirty six is where I was going. Right? If I get there, well, it'll help. Eight and thirty six. What I told y'all. All right. You know, sometimes I forget. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be what? Free. I have entitled this message today, "Free Indeed." And so, if you want to, what, to write that down or whatever. But I am free indeed. Bow your head with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to preach your word. I thank you for another chance to stand behind this pulpit in front of this great church. I thank you for another opportunity for it to be worldwide, nationwide, on camera, on TV, on YouTube. God, I thank you for the opportunities. I thank you for the, the message that you've given us. I thank you for the church that you've allowed me to lead. And Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. Say it like you mean it. Amen. Amen. So be it. If the Son therefore has set you free, you are free indeed. What does that mean? If the Son therefore has set you free, you're not bound by anything. I'm not bound anymore. Oh, I lived a life of being bound. Oh, I, just, oh, I lived a Christian life of being bound. Come on, somebody. I lived a Christian life with handcuffs on. 
I lived a religious Christian life. Haircuts, sleeves, shorts. Come on. I remember living that life. When I wouldn't wear shorts for a while, I wear shorts every day now because I'm free. <laughs> Amen. That's the truth. That don't matter. That's a, the only thing that deters me is single digits and teens, baby. That's it. <laughs> If you go into a grocery store and it's 105 degrees in there because the ladies get cold as they crank the heat up, you work in there for a while. You'll be wanting some shorts. Amen. <laughs> so I would work every day in shorts. But I remember a time when I looked down on people that were wearing shorts. They are supposed to be modest. You little religious devil. Shut your mouth. Oh, yeah. I remember living that lifestyle. I remember being that ignorant. I didn't call you stupid, I said great. Because we didn't know anything. There's nothing wrong with being ignorant. There's nothing wrong with standing. Yeah. Okay. When you went to school, you were ignorant. But you learned, so you're not ignorant anymore. Man, I hope not. You've been to one school you went to. Okay? And so, I'm just saying. And so, I just let you know that there's nothing wrong with being ignorant of some things. There's something wrong with staying ignorant of some things. Well, when Jesus set me free, I was free indeed. Now, I didn't say everything goes. Not everything goes. I, I dress modestly. I'm not wearing some. I'm not wearing some speedo shorts out there with a clergy sign on the side. I'm not doing. I, I dress. I dress appropriately for what my job is. I don't have a suit and tie on either. I don't have. I dress appropriately for what God has allowed me to do. When I come to this church and it's time for service, I dress appropriately for what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, I didn't say you had to wear a suit and tie. I don't care what you wear. Now, I'm going to preface that. <laughs> if you come with a you know, string bikini on, we're probably going to give you something to cover up with. We're not going to ask you to leave. We're just going to give you something to cover up with. I know it's hot in here because y'all fanning and I'm fanning and I know. You know, it's how it goes. We get up. There's many people in this little bitty building. It's kind of hot. But here for just a second. If he sets me free, then am I free indeed? Then why do I go back and put myself in chains to where I was, where I got delivered from from the first place? The thing I don't understand about most Christian people, I'll just call them church people. Church people is because is that they go back and they get saved out of sin, but they go back and take a religious chain and wrap themselves in a religious chain. I don't understand that. I don't understand not, not getting yourself, what I mean by religion, this is what I mean, all the do's and the don'ts and the thus's and therefores. You can't do this, 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 you can't do this. Can't do this. God is not a can't do God, he's a can do God. I choose not to sin because I don't want to, not because I'm going to hell for it. I choose because I don't desire that any longer. I don't desire to be in that sinful state any longer. I don't desire drink. Can I just help you? Get away from alcohol. Yeah. Get away from pot and dope. Yes. See, I'm just telling you right now. I'm with your God. I'm going to get up here and get in trouble. <laughs> get away from it. It does nothing but destroy your life. Listen, I, well, what does the Bible say about it? Listen, all I know is this. God tells me to get close I can to Him. And I've never seen that that's ever helped me get close to Him. So I just choose to throw it away. I'm not telling you. Listen, you do what you do, okay? I'm just going to preach to you what God's Word says. You do what you do. Some of us, there's some folks in church right now got a dope plate under the couch. I'm just telling you right now. Okay, I'm just telling you. Come on. Just letting you know. They'll go to church. And I'm glad you're here. But God's working on you. Yes. God's dealing with your heart. God's dealing with your life. Can I just say it'll destroy your life? Yes. Okay. I, I, that's, not, that's not in the notes. Sorry. That was for free. Hey, John 8 32, it says, And you shall know the truth. I shall know the truth. And it's the truth that'll set me free. The Bible says that I shall know the truth. And the truth that I know shall set me free. 
I don't believe for one second that a Christian that is first reborn and born for, uh, into the things of God that don't know anything, don't know the maps from the table of contents, and they don't know anything in between. I don't believe that, they, that what's required of them is what's required of me. Because I know a little bit. I don't know it all, but I know something. And so I just let you know that I, I believe that there's more required of me than a brand new Christian trying to learn how to crawl. I believe that. I believe when you know it's wrong, then you ought to quit it. But I believe when you know it's right, you ought to continue to do it. Amen? And so I, I don't believe there's something. I don't believe that God says, okay, you got saved. Now you're responsible for everything. I don't believe that's true. I see I see says right here that you shall know the truth and the truth that you know shall make you free. Yeah. So are you saying that I can get saved and sin? Didn't say that at all. I said that you can get saved and you can begin to learn what the truth is. Amen. And as you learn what the truth is, that's how you deal with what's going on yeah. in your life. Here's what I, here I believe sin is. Sin is willfully knowing you're doing something against the things of God. Amen. That's what sin is. Willfully. I understand, God, that you told me not to do it. I recognize I shouldn't do it. I recognize it's against your word, but I really don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. To me, that is sin. Yes. When you do something unaware and say, well, somebody said, well, you offended somebody today. Well, I wasn't aware of it. And I, didn't intentionally, I didn't intentionally offend them. So therefore, how can I be responsible for that? Now, when I find out about it, I got to deal with it. Yes. But if I didn't know about it, how am I going to deal with it? Right. People use that excuse all the time. <laughs> Well, you got mad at somebody. Yeah, I did. But you know what? I didn't, I didn't cuss them. I didn't call their name and say, God, I wish you'd just drag them on to hell. I didn't say anything like that. Yeah, I got aggravated at somebody. Oh, not today. Don't look around and say, who do you get it? I didn't, okay? I, I didn't get aggravated at you today. I'm just saying, I, when, when you look around and you find yourself in a situation, people always say, well, you can't live a whole a life without sin. I can live a day. Yeah. Right. Oh, the religious folks looking at me cross-eyed. You cannot. Yes, you can. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. And listen, when I know the truth, and the truth shall make me free. It's the truth I know that shall make me free. John 14 and 6 says this. Jesus saying to him, I am the way. He is the truth and He is the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Go back to my last verse. And He shall know the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus. Go back to my next verse. 14, whatever it was. Jesus saying to Him, I am the way. I need somebody to help me preach this point. I am the way. He said, I, there's, I, there ain't no other way, but I am the way. Right. I'm set free. If you're in this place this morning and you are not bound this morning, you ought to shout out to the Lord. I am free this morning. I am the way. I am the truth. What is the truth? Thank you very much. And the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You cannot, listen, this Bible does not contain truth. It is truth. This Bible does not just contain it. It is it. I know that's not correct English. Hang on, hang with me. Just laugh at the white guy. Keep on going. I hear it. Sorry. Hear me. I understand that this Bible, from the front to the back and upside down, and the maps and the table of contents and all the references, everything in it is the truth. It is the way. And it is the life. Somebody help me this morning. God, I need you this morning. Holy Ghost, I need you this morning. I need you this morning because listen, when I can get this into your spirit, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to God but through him. You can't get there no other way. You can't get there any other how. You can't get there any other way. You've got to know right now from this point that he is your truth. He is your way, and he is your life. If he's not those things, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're probably going to fall a little short. Amen. <laughs> Go back to my first verse, first, uh, John, no, sorry, John 8, 36. If the Son that shall set you free, make you free, sorry. You should be free indeed. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free. If the Son makes me free. 
Who's the son? Jesus. Jesus. How do I get free? 14. The, he's the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth, and that truth shall make you free. John 8, 36. If the Son therefore make you free, you shall be free indeed. How do I get free? I'm so glad you asked again. It's because in John 14, 6, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Verse 8, 32. And you shall know the truth, and that truth shall make you free. Verse 8, 36. If the Son therefore make me free, I am free indeed. Can I share with you, say he's going somewhere. I don't know where he's going, but he's going somewhere. Can I share with you this morning that if you don't know Jesus, you are bound and you don't even know you're bound. Can I share with you, I don't care how much money you have, I don't care how much prestige you have, I don't care what, what you drive, where you live, what job title you may have. If you don't know Jesus, you are bound this morning. You don't have anything but you have, listen, but filthy rags, and you don't have your, listen, your righteousness is as a filthy rags, and you have got to know him. For if you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. But without the truth, you are bound and not free. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. I tell you, I'm just, I'm, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. This verse scares the snot out of me. Can I just share why? Because not everybody that says he's Lord is going to enter into the in heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Brother Whitlock, I try to do what God tells me to do all the time. Because if I don't do what the will of the Father is, if I don't do his will, I'm going to say, Lord, Lord. And he's going to say, verse 22. Then he was saying to me that day, Lord, have we not crossed out in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. Verse 23. Now, professor to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. I hate to live my life, preach this gospel, see souls saved, see people healed, and miracles happen. I hate to live my entire life and see kids come to the altar of God and, and, and live and, and, and preach and, and do everything I can and for, uh, that I feel like I'm doing for the Lord. And get up there and say, but did I not, verse 22, but did I not prophesy in your name? Verse 22. Did I not? Did I not cast out devils? And did I not do many wonderful works? And Jesus says in verse 23, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. I don't want to stand before the Lord. And he said, I don't know you. Because you never gave yourself to me. You lived a life of church. But you never lived a life of Christian. You never were Christ-like. You were a church member, not a Christian. You went to church. You didn't wear shorts, thank God. You, your hair was cut short, hallelujah. Your hair was long, ladies. Uh, you didn't wear lip paint, and you didn't have ear bobs in. And... But you didn't love my people. You didn't care about the laws. You didn't hold to the faith. You didn't sing unto the Lord. You didn't prophesy. You didn't do what I asked you to do. You didn't take somebody by the hand that had fallen and you that you crushed their head with your heel. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't have the nerve to lead somebody back to the Lord because it was it was it looked bad on you if you talked to that one person because. I'm just going to preach and y'all just do what you want to do. 
But not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord. I, I just want you to understand something for just a second. I am free. Amen. We sang this morning, I am free. Through him the blind will see. See, through him the mute will sing. Through him the dead will rise. Through, and through him our hearts will suffer. Praise. Whatever. Through whom the darkness, through him the darkness flees. Through him I am free. Then we say freedom reigns in this place. And I had my wife sing, he set me free. I want you to understand something, church. I want you to get this. Look at my nose. Look at me. I want you to understand something. You can go to church here all the rest of your days and be bound and be upset and be discouraged and be hurt. Or else you can say, God, I'm done with it. I want to be free. I break every chain. Break every chain. I hear chains falling right now as I'm talking. I hear chains falling. I hear people saying, you know what? I'm tired of being depressed. I'm tired of being bad. I'm tired of being drunk. I'm tired of getting high. I'm tired of, uh, of worrying about all my other things that are going on in my life. I'm tired of sneaking around, getting on the computer, and checking out naked girls. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it in my life. See, so I'm preaching... And y'all looking down, because I'm hitting all of it. I, I, I won't do it because I don't want to embarrass anybody. But I could take a I could I could take a survey. I, this is just I, I'm not, of how many men are bound by that computer. And I bet I get about half. I bet I get about half. And you don't think it's going to destroy you, but it will. Married men, it will destroy your families. Single men, it will destroy your outlook of who women are and what they're for. That is, a, that is God's daughter. That is God's child. Women almost get to just as bad, so I'm not, I'm not just throwing it off on the men. Ooh, it got quiet up in this house. Can I see your phone? Can I look at your history? I know you deleted it, but I can find it. <laughs> I'm just saying, just to be saying. I'm just telling you right now, can I just be pastor for a few minutes? Can I just tell you that God is looking for a, a church that is free and righteous and holy and that not bound up by all these things in your life. Listen, that's what, listen, Jesus doesn't, I, must, I am not condemning you for those things. What I'm telling you is there's a way out. Amen. There's a way out. If you're tired of living that way, there's a way out. If you like living that way, live that way. If, you, if you're tired and sick of it, if you're tired of falling and every time you walk by, that bottle calls to you. Every time you walk by, you can almost just smell it, though. Thinking right now, where I can buy some pills, because I'm out. Thinking right now, who's got some that I, I know they're not using? Who had a who had a dental appointment? I could get some Vicodin from. Who? It consumes your every minute thoughts. And God can't speak to you because that Vicodin didn't speak to you. God can't speak to you because the alcohol is calling you. Oh, girls calling you on the website. God can't speak to you. God's trying to get through to you. And every time God begins to speak to you, I, 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 listen, none of this is on this. This is also for you. This is God. I'm just trying to get you free. I love this place, and I, I don't want you living a life being bound by stuff. I want you free. I want you free to, I want you free to serve God. 
So you're free to serve God with everything that's in you. Free to serve God with every, every, everything that you've got. Free to give God everything that you've got. Listen, I just want to share this with you, and I'll, and I'll shut up. And I'll try to anyway. I, I want to share this with you. The things that God has blessed you with, don't put them down with the devil's stuff. Don't, don't just say, God, I appreciate all the blessings that you got, but I'm going to run it through the sewer. I'm free today. You're free today. If you have Jesus Christ and you understand, you're free today. Now listen to me. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not saying you're going on your way to hell. What I'm saying is this. It will take you that way. It will take you that path. Because I know I'm talking to somebody right now who every time you get off that computer, you say, God, please deliver me from this. God, please take this from me. God, please say that you beg and you plead God. I'm not saying you don't love God. I'm saying you love God so much that it hurts you when you sin against Him. Amen. But you just are bound by something. Every time you say this is the last time. Every time this is the last time. And you love God with all your heart. You love your family with all your heart. And you love your church. But there's just something there. That you just can't get through. Mm -hmm. You just can't break through that barrier. Right. You think you're always going to be this way. The devil's a liar. Amen. Amen. The devil's a liar. You're not always going to be like this. It's not, not always going to be this way. It's not always going to be this way. It's not always going to be like it is right now. Amen. Your life's not always going to be how it is. It's going to get better. Your life's going to get better. Things are going to change for you. Listen, I don't know if you know this or not, but you came to a place where blessing happened and miracles happened. I don't know if you know this or not, but this is a blessed place. This place is blessed. And whenever you walk into this place, that blessing gets on you. I, I, I truly believe that. When you walk into this building, the blessing of God falls on you. The anointing of God is heavy in this house and it falls on you. God's spirit moves in this house and we're not about ready to stop him from moving. But if you're in this place today and you say, Brother Jeff, I've got to have some help. I don't know what to do. There's an open some altars. I know this is Sunday morning and we're supposed to be good. I don't care. I don't care Amen. what time of day it is. Hallelujah. I want you to understand this. This is God's house. And this is what God laid on my heart to preach this morning. Amen. He knew you were going to be here. He knew who was going to be here and who wasn't. And I'm here to tell you right now, right now, right now. Hallelujah. He's calling you. Amen. I don't have to tell you that. You feel it. You hear me? Shut the drugs up. In the name of Jesus, the voice of the devil, we command you to shut your mouth. That God can speak. Shut it up. You feel that tug? Yeah, I got time. It's just after a clock. See, I, I've got 30 more minutes. 